Now, under these two unit, these two acts right here, we can actually send an email to our client who can e-sign that signature and use it. This uh, UTA act right here also is the same act that allows you to sign your name at Walmart when you use the credit card and then you sign your name on the pad. That's the same act that allows that. We allow it in real estate. So you would send the listing agreement to your seller who would e-sign it and then send it back to you. Like I said, in the old days, I used to have to drive out to the seller's house and say, well, here's the listing contract. Can you, I need you to get a signature and they would have to sign it. All right. Here's another one. And I always say that there is the technology's ability to scale out processes the legislative act to create laws. So here's an example of a law that's still on the book that you are still required to follow that probably you don't or will ever violate anymore. The do not call list. The do not call list applies to anybody that is selling goods or services, including real estate agents. There are people that put used to put their landline phone number on this do not call list so that they would not get called by salesmen. And if you were a salesman, you used to have to check before you called that number, was this number on that list? And you'd have to renew your list every 31 days so that somebody that just added or dropped would or would not be on that list. All right. So in today's world of cell phones, which does not apply, by the way, this was for landlines. We don't really have this problem. But now the new evolution is texting. We don't even call. Or drip campaigns for emails where we send email. I'm sure you guys get all those spam emails. Those are not covered under the do not call list. Well, the do not call list has a couple exemptions from it. So that even if you are making land-based calls, there's two exemptions. If a, a person that you call was a past client, meaning you have you, they have used your services before, you can actually call that person for up to 18 months after that transaction, even if they are on the do not call list. So you get, uh, what's the word, maybe a grandfather exemption. So you call this person and they go, hey, I'm on the do not call list. You say, yes, but I helped you close a house a year ago. You fall under this 18 month exemption as a previous client. I can call you to see if you want to do business again, because I have 18 months as a previous client. Or you have three months if the consumer makes the inquiry to you first all right so let's say somebody sees your sign and calls you and goes hey raymond i'm calling about that house you had sign i saw the house you have for listed is it a four bedroom and you go no it's only three bedroom and they go okay sorry thanks and tomorrow I list a four bedroom. So I go through my call list and I call them back and go, hey, I have a four bedroom listed now. And they go, well, I'm on the do not call list. Well, sorry, you started this by making an inquiry to me first. I can call you for three months, even if you're on the list. You initiated the call. All right. Now, there are other laws that we adhere to for faxing. <laughs> Some of you people out there are going, what's a fax? I don't get it. Just the facts, man. No, just the facts. Um, <clears throat> they talk about the uh, Consumer Protection Act for telephone, the Junk Fax Act, um, and they are all controlled by the FCC. There are some other rules on for the internet most notably this one called the can spam, which allows a person to unsubscribe. This is the one that requires all these people that you solicit, that solicit you, and you know, you get 34 junk email, junk emails. 
that are like from Lowe's and that cupcake factory and all of that because you opted in. They must, at the bottom of the email you see, have a feature that allows for an unsubscribe or they are in violation of this federal law. There are some laws that are in, in still to protect children. Facebook is a good example. If you've got a young child that's ever wanted to get on Facebook, you know that they must be at least 13 years of age to hold a Facebook account legally, all right? Because of this COPA law, it's the Children's Online Privacy Protection. You are not allowed to c collect data on children under the age of 13. And Facebook most definitely collects your data. That's why they limit that age to be uh, 13. All right, so that's the end of that chapter. Once again, I want to encourage you, if you have questions or math questions or any questions specifically related to dealing with uh, <clears throat> anything we talked about, don't forget, you can email me. Go to Raymond at realuniversity.com. There are online questions at the end of this chapter, probably right down here. And there are online, or there are questions in the back of the book. I would encourage you to do those and go out and maybe you can find uh, some practice math questions as well. We're going to do some more of that math, so stick around for more fun with math. Um, if you've got nothing else, I'll see you in the next chapter.